It's another episode of the Bobcat Club podcast. Today's guest is the new volleyball head coach for Texas State, Sean Hewitt. Sean, thanks for joining the show. Thank you, Carl. How are you doing? Ah, doing pretty good. All, all things considered, this is a different time, but we are making the best of it and staying healthy, staying quarantined as we do this over Zoom. And I want to start the show off. You've been here for 14 years now with Texas State, and I understand you have some bling, and th this is scripted, of course, but uh, can you show off some of that bling for us? Yes, sir, you had me prepared for this. That's seven rings right there from the volleyball program yes. over 14 years. Yes, sir. So why don't you walk around like that all the time? Couldn't you just well, wear it every day? Yeah, you know, it's so funny. I always I always would wear one the year after we won it. You know, when we get it, I'll wear it for the next year. And then it's kind of like, okay, now it's time to get on board and win another one. So the years I don't have one on is when I'm like on a mission. You know, we're ready to try to get another one. So wearing all of them is a little much, but I have a nice little case that I keep them in here at home. Is that something that you guys can show to the student athletes that are coming in that, hey, we have playing pretty much every class you've, I don't think you guys have had a gap where there was an entire class that didn't win a conference championship ring, whether tournament or regular season. So you, that is true. I don't think we've had anyone since I've been here, I know, go through and not win at least one uh, championship. So it's pretty special. It's pretty awesome to be able to say that. Uh, it definitely helps in the recruiting process. So we're excited about that. Yeah, it's it's even funny. Uh, you, you probably remember uh, my buddy Arn the same year he and I. <laughs> yeah, we started Texas State Volleyball yep. on the radio for a little while there. I just did a few games, a, a tournament and a few home games. But uh, he did all the games and he has the first ever Sunbelt ring uh, just yes. on display. And it talk that's kind of the luck but also you're you're shooting about 50 percent on getting uh, that's your hitting percentage right now with uh, yeah getting that's a, a pretty pretty good percentage I like to tell people and to and thinking of that as well I can only think in the 14 years I've been here two or three years that we actually weren't playing for a championship so even the years we didn't get a ring we were playing for one which is pretty awesome like I think that's a speaks volumes of our program, where we're at, uh, the type of student athletes we have here. Uh, to be playing for a championship almost every year is, is something pretty special. It, it is, and that's a tradition you hope to continue as the head coach. Once we can, you know, get head coaching back to normal, but uh, we could go ahead and rewind 14 years with Coach Karen Chisholm. What stands out? One of the most unique things uh, – about her was she really let Tracy and I get our hands hands wet and we were hands on. It wasn't just her program. Uh, she let us do things that not all assistant coaches get to do. And so that made it uh, very fun. It made it very unique uh, that we got to be so involved. Some head coaches like to have total control and like to have it their way. And she always wanted our input. She always wanted us to do do our thing um, and so it, it was very easy to stay here for 14 years when you love where you work and you're playing for championships and your head coach is giving you a lot of the reins so that was awesome. Uh, you, you brought on you've hired a staff now and uh, now's as good a time as any to talk about the staff and how they're going to have responsibilities similar to how you and Tracy had responsibilities under Coach Schiff. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Um, that was that was probably one of the biggest things when I got the job was, who am I going to bring on? What did I want to do? What did I want my staff? Um, there were so many variables. I had reached out to some mentors and really asked some questions about what I wanted. You know, does just being in the gym matter? Do recruiting? Like, what, what was the things that made people stand out for what they wanted on a staff? Um, and so it was... I had some people that I thought, you know, and obviously Keith and Tori were at the top of my list um, from day one. Um, and to be able to get my top two people, I, the number of other coaches that have reached out to me since then, like, holy crap, buddy. Like the fact that you got your top two people in your first staff speaks volumes of what you're going to do. And so 
Tori and Keith have both been in the Sun Belt, uh, so they know the level of volleyball. They know what it takes uh, to win the Sun Belt. Uh, the two years that we did not win the Sun Belt, Tori was at Arkansas State, and she won it both years there. Uh, she's trained a player of the year from the Sun Belt. And then she went on to Ole Miss, where she has had two or three top 30, top 40 recruiting classes at Ole Miss. Um, and so she knows the game at a very high level, knows the recruiting process at a very, very high level. Um, and so to be able to get her on board was huge. Uh, I've known Keith just probably a little bit longer than Tori, um, but I knew one day that Keith and I would work together. It was, we made a connection over volleyball. Um, his knowledge and process for the X's and O's, uh, his attention to detail and how he makes athletes want to pay attention to details uh, was huge. Um, I've seen him, his last job at Delaware, he went with someone that was a first time head coach and was helping turn around a program. Uh, but it was huge to me because he's been there for three years with someone that was a first time head coach. And so he was just like, I know some of the things you're going to have to deal with. I know some of the things that I can take off your shoulders so you can deal with other issues. And so it, it's been a dream of ours to work together. And so the fact that I could get both of them in this first year was huge. Yeah. And we're looking forward to seeing what you guys can do. I think you guys were able to start practices in spring, maybe two weeks before this whole thing went down. So, yep. you know, when you guys eventually can get rolling, fingers crossed, you all have a July camp, correct? We have camps in July, like you said, fingers crossed. Um, I know a lot of that's going to change because of other camps and we're going to have to revamp some things, but we're going to have some camps. We're going to have some time, um, uh, to get some athletes and that's that's the next biggest part is the recruiting side of it um is hard but i keep telling recruits and people i talk to everyone's in the same boat it's not like all these other schools are recruiting and we can't and all these other players are, we're all in the same boat and so we just gotta be smart and, and stay safe and healthy and when this passes then we figure out what's next but we're all we're all in the same boat here so it's there's no advantage for anyone yeah, exactly. Speaking of us being in the same boat, how's your boat doing? I know you have a four-year-old at home. and uh, Life with a quarantine, four, you know, four, four-year-old, you don't really know what's going on. You, you probably have to explain things very differently. And uh, how's that experience been? He thinks we're still on vacation. There's no bedtime. We're trying to get back to a routine. And, you know, it was awkward timing in the fact that it was spring break. And then all this happened because, again, spring break for me is a time that I, I can let him stay up. I can spend as much time with him as I can because I know it's recruiting season. I know it's spring season. And so um, it's unique in that it was that happened. And then it was like, okay, now we're together 24-7 again. Um, he's been awesome. He's we're working on our schoolwork and, you know, trying to do some, he, he knows that there's learning time and then there's some times that he can play on his iPad with, as he told me the other day, I like the fighting games better than learning. Um, so uh, he's keeping me on my toes, uh, but he, he's so awesome. And he, he finally said yesterday, dad, do I not get to go to school today? And I was like, okay, it's taken about two weeks, but you did realize that it's a little different, but, we're managing, we're surviving. Uh, we're trying to get outside as much, take some walks. Uh, we live over off of 21 in the back of our neighborhood. Um, there's a really pretty area by the river. So we're walking the dog back there, trying to get, get outside a little bit and get some exercise. And as I keep telling everyone, trying to stay sane as much as we can, living this new normal life. Um, but we're, we're managing and we're figuring it out. Yeah, I took a bike ride around San Marcos, and we'll do that as long as we can. Hopefully, it stays roughly like this until yeah. everything blows over. I think the university has made summer one online only, but hopefully summer two, which they hope to be the revening of classes, happens. But thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we're looking forward to the fall when you take the reins. Thank you, sir. And I'm going to tell everyone, it's a great day to be a Bobcat. Eat them up. It's a great day to be a Bobcat indeed. Thanks, Sean.
Thank you, Carl.